Since electrons not only act as particles, but they can also act as waves, we might expect a diffraction pattern to be formed when electrons are allowed to flow through double slit screen as long as the size of the openings of the slits is on the order of the wavelength of the wave produced by those electrons. So, to see exactly what we mean, let's conduct the following thought experiment. Let's suppose we have a double slit screen where the size of each one of these openings is on the order of the wavelength of the wave produced by those electrons. So we allow those electrons to basically flow through our two openings and eventually they form a diffraction pattern on the following viewing screen. So constructive interference of the waves leads to bright fringes and destructive interference leads to dark fringes. So this graph basically represents the intensity of our fringes formed on the screen by our electrons. So these humps, these crests, basically represent the regions of our bright fringes and these troughs represent the regions of dark fringes. So as we might expect, the most intense, the brightest fringe is formed at the center and the intensity decreases as we get farther away from the center of our viewing screen. So as we saw in the double slit experiment conducted by by young light forms an interference pattern that can be visualized by the eye. Now although electrons form a similar pattern to actually visualize our fringes formed by the electrons we have to use a fluorescent screen. So that basically means anytime an electron strikes that fluorescent screen it basically glows. That location where it strikes glows. So in this particular experiment, we had many electrons passing through our two openings at any given time. But what happens if we decrease the number of electrons that pass through the two openings to the point where only one electron enters any one of the two openings at any given point in time. So basically what type of diffraction pattern would we observe? Would we observe a diffraction pattern at all? So initially, the locations of where electrons hit the screen would appear to be completely random, as shown in diagram 1. So we have many electrons hitting our screen, but the locations appear to be completely random. So no diffraction pattern appears initially. However, if we allow the experiment to run for a very long time, a diffraction pattern will in fact emerge. As shown in diagram 2. So we have the center fringe, the brightest fringe, then we have two more fringes and these regions in the middle that are blank represent our dark fringes. That's where destructive interference takes place. So basically, although it would be impossible to predict where each individual electron would strike the screen, we could in fact predict the probability of an electron striking a certain region of screen. So once again, even though it's, Im it's impossible to predict exactly where the electron will strike, and it's impossible to actually follow the pathway of any single individual electron, what is possible possible is to predict the probability of an electron hitting a certain region. In fact, we see as these fringes are formed, most of the electrons are in fact hitting these regions and very few electrons are hitting the following dark region. So, this probability is given by taking the wave function and squaring that. And this is known as the probability density of our electrons. So inside the dark fringes, our probability density is very small. It's about zero. While in the regions where bright fringes are formed, the probability density, psi squared, the wave function squared, is very large. 
there is a very high probability that electrons will hit these regions and a very small probability the electrons will hit any one of these dark regions. So, what exactly can we conclude from this experiment? So, let's read the following two statements. So, a diffraction pattern is only produced when wave interference takes place. So, in order for this diffraction pattern to actually form, wave interference between the waves actually has to lead to constructive and destructive interference, which produces the bright and dark fringes as shown in diagram 2. We have the bright fringes and the dark fringes in between. So, since in this experiment only a single electron travels through any one of those two slits at any given moment in time, this implies that the electron must travel through both openings at the same time to produce the wave interference and this only takes place if the electron behaves as a wave when it actually passes through those two, uh, two slits. So, once again, this is exactly what we're talking about. So, what we're saying here is the following. At any given time, a single electron is allowed to pass through any one of those two openings at any given moment in time. So we have one electron passes, then we have a second electron passes, then we have a third electron that passes, and so on. So basically, if the electron acted as a particle, then that means the electron can only pass through either this opening or this opening. It can't actually pass through both openings at the same time if it acted as a particle. But if it acted as a wave, if the electron behaved as a wave, that implies it could travel through these two openings at the same exact uh, time. And a wave interference pattern, a diffraction pattern, is only formed when our wave travels through these slits at the same time so that wave interference could actually take place. So, what this experiment basically showed is that when the electron flows through our screen, it acts as, it behaves as a wave, so that the electron actually passes through the two openings at the same time, interfering and forming these bright and dark fringes. Now, the second statement that we should basically conclude with is the following. When we treat our electrons as if they were the waves, then this wave function quantity psi measures the displacement, the amplitude of those waves, the amplitude of the field produced by those matter waves. On the other hand, if we're treating our electrons as if they were particles, then the square of the wave function known as the probability density describes the probability of finding an electron at a certain location and a certain time with some mathematical quantity. 